Hi, I'm David Lawrence, CEO and founder of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're going to be talking about fitting a sleeve or brace to the ankle or the knee area. In particular, right now, we're talking about the knee brace. So on a knee brace, as we talked about, it is the idea of stabilization, trying to improve both alignment and stability of the knee joint. We have Sarah with us today with a brace that she utilizes. And what I want you to, to understand is kind of how did I get started with Sarah in the process of the brace that she has. She has had multiple knee surgeries, has had knee instability over a long time period. So it wasn't just fitting her with a brace, but an entire rehabilitation process of utilizing that brace as well. But we get started with first fitting the brace. So in a brace like this, a frame brace, a very stabilizing brace with lots of straps, it can be somewhat confusing to the patient. I like to first explain the brace to them. Now, now we're not gonna talk about products here or, or, or the actual uh, names of products, but normally I would, because I want the patient to understand this isn't just a thing stuck on your leg. This is gonna be a brace you're gonna be using. And you want to know this brace. You want to be your brace. So at the end of the day, it's not like, well, this guy gave me a brace and I hope it helps me, but this guy gave me something that I understand. I really know how to use it. I know how to adjust it. I know how to put it on correctly. So what we wanna start with is the donning process of this type of brace. And what you're going to want to do in this brace is have the person step through it. So in this case, what we're going to have Sarah do is pick up her foot and step through, clear the back strap and come all the way into position. Now, if you look at a knee brace in general, most people would think of this knee brace as right about in here fits right over top of the center of the knee. The biggest mistake made on most knee braces is patients put them on too low or too far back, too far forward. You always want to look at a knee brace and slide that brace up until that knee center, the center of the knee joints, uh, uh, the knee, the braces joint, excuse me, aligns with the top of the kneecap, not the middle of the kneecap, the top of the kneecap, much tighter than you would think. From there, you're going to stabilize, tighten the two back straps, just simply take up the slack when the joint is in the correct position, and then come all the way around the back and tighten up the top and bottom straps. Now, these straps are, do not have to be a tourniquet effect. You aren't trying to cut off circulation. You just want to take up the slack. Same here at the bottom. I'm going to come around and take up the slack, but not try to, again, crimp down on her leg too much. If I have the knee joint in the right position, it's more centered on the knee front to back. It's aligned when her knee bends to the top of the kneecap. And then I have, and my back straps are taking up or holding my position. So if I come here then to what I like to call the money strap, this strap right below the knee is where I'm going to put compression that's going to both hold the brace up and give it stabilization to the knee. So the one other thing that's important for a patient to understand, if you bend your knee a little bit for me, Sarah, you're going to find this back strap here is the strap that's going to stabilize and hold on the top of her calf. That's gonna give you support. If this strap is down on her calf, the device is, or the brace is gonna to wanna to slip down her leg. So you really want to make sure that as she bends the knee, it's not so high that it's gonna pinch the back of her knee, but it's right up into the crease of the back of her knee. From there you say, okay, that feels like it's in a good position. Then I come to the stabilizing strap, and here's where I wanna create a little more compression a little bit more of a push. Now notice I'm not in any strap having to cinch down super tight. If this fits well, I can get a good stabilizing fit without cutting off circulation. From there, I'm gonna ask a patient to simply go ahead and stand up for me. There you go. And just get a sense of the pressure. How does it feel? Any place that may be bothering them. Sarah, I want you to bend your knees a little bit like you're gonna do a squat for me, but not too deep, yeah, hands on. Just a little bit and come back up a couple of times little bit deeper, put pressure on it. Just make sure, come back up, if she's saying any problems, anything's pinching, anything's binding in any spot. If it is, let's look at what that is and why. How do we adjust that? Now go ahead, Sarah, and have a seat. I want you to look at two other things that come with these devices. First of all, this particular brace has a type of knee support, kind of the cushions that are on inside of each side of the knee. The original ones that come with it are these kind of rubber suction cups. They work very, very well. If you're gonna put this brace on and play a 45 minute, hour long, hour and a half long sports event, no problem at all. 
but in Sarah's case, she needs this brace all the time or for much longer time periods. This will really start to tear your skin up, I have found through the years. You get quite a bit of skin irritation. So there are sleeves, uh, and as we take this off, we'll show you the support that gives you much more of a cushion without as much of a grip. Now you lose a little grip, so it could slip a little more, and if you're a quarterback on a football team, you're gonna want that grip. But if you're walking around, most of your activities aren't at that high level, then this is a much more comfortable support. And the last also is a sleeve that you can put under the brace first, which again, protects your skin all the way up. Negative slippage, all right? So it is more comfortable as far as points, but the brace is gonna to tend to slide down the leg more than it stays in place. So people have to kind of figure out what is the most comfortable for them. Now, next for me then, Sarah, is we're gonna go ahead and take it off and completely come out of the brace. There you go. I wanna talk for a second. Remember we talked about these two back straps. Sarah already had those in place. When you first get the brace, these are the first two straps. Once you anchor top and bottom, you want to take up the slack to figure out how far back and front is your knee or is the brace on your knee. And when that feels comfortable, it's in the right place, you don't wanna unstrap these. These two are gonna be holding the position of whether the brace is in the right place you want. From there, you only have three straps, top, bottom, and front. I'm not gonna assume that the patient, because I describe to them and I say, hey, do you know how to put this on? They go, yeah, I just saw you do it, that'd be fine. Now, I really want them to do it themselves because it is a bit tricky when you're doing it yourself at home. So before they leave, I want them to go ahead and Sarah, go ahead, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna step back, let you put that guy on and get that brace all the way into position. Now you notice in her case, she's been trained, so she knows to pull it up nice and high. She puts on the bottom strap first, that's fine. Top or bottom, I don't think makes a big difference to me but that's what works for her. You'll notice that once she straps it and hold up right there, Sarah, for a second, because she knows what you're doing, but these two back straps, you would want to be, are they stabilizing so the brace can't come too far forward? From there, she comes to the front and gives it a, there you go, a good snug. That one, she pulls a little bit tighter than any other strap. That's given her the most stabilization. Take your time with this. I've seen patients come in to me with braces on, on the wrong leg. Remember, these are leg braces for one leg only, if, especially if they're custom fit. And they say, oh, my other knee's bothering me. I tried to put it on my other knee. Doesn't work that way. I've seen them upside down. So you have to make sure you talk to the patient top and bottom. All right, it's very, sounds simple, but it's not. And the last thing, I've actually seen them on backwards. So the knee wouldn't bend at all. Uh, it was actually, unless you had a flamingo, the knee was not going to work. So this is the thing you have to really talk the patient through that process, have them bend it back and forth a few times, make sure they can feel the compression and they're comfortable with the load. Now we're gonna talk about donning and doffing knee sleeves and braces that are more off the shelf products. Remember, we're not gonna talk about product names. Uh, we are simply to identify the types of braces that you might use and show you some of the uh, tips on how to don or doff them correctly. The first is a knee sleeve. It can be a, a slip-on or a Velcro closure like you see here. And at the same point, these are open patella. That means they take compression off your kneecap. Really important on these braces is getting them in the right position. So pulling up until the top of the kneecap fits fully inside the patellar opening. Velcro closure is nice because you can adapt to someone that has a different calf size versus thigh size. On the slip-on, sometimes that can be a little more difficult to be consistent. Doesn't have to be cutting off the circulation. Always checking to make sure that, again, the top of the kneecap is inside the hole. This is to give you compression, help with decreased swelling, proprioceptive reminder, and warmth to the knee joint. So the next brace is looking at, or sleeve uh, combination, is looking at a patellar stabilization. Now there's a number of different products out there that will accomplish this same uh, task, but the idea is, in this case, you're seeing a sleeve being pulled on first, also pulled up in the right position, high above the patella, so it's well inside the sleeve. From there, she'll get it into the right position because if the base sleeve is not right, the uh, bolster support over top won't be correct. Make sure the kneecap's right, and then she's gonna grab a bolster unit or a compression uh, or a support system that she'll place on the outside of the patella. 
Remember, these compression devices are always placed laterally or outside the patella and are used to stabilize the lateral patella. So first put on a stabilization strap just to hold the bolster in the right position, connecting it down somewhere along the medial side. From there, she can take the two straps and she can create compression all the way around the bolster on top and bottom, and she can adjust that compression so that she pulls it more towards the top or more from the bottom to create the kind of compression or support you can see as she's kind of hugging and wrapping the outside of the kneecap or patella to stabilize it or move it medially. In these cases, the patella always moves laterally in an unstable nature, so you want to create lateral support. The next brace is an unloader brace. This is really for somebody with arthritis in their knee and they're having compartmental arthritis. And that's usually the case. It's either medial, much more common, but it can be either medial or lateral compartment arthritis. And you want to uh, decompress or take pressure off. And this particular brace, which is a unilateral sided brace, it is going to be used to decrease compression on the medial side or medial compartment of the knee. These can also be bilateral upright devices in which there's a, there's a, a upright on both sides and you sandwich the knee. You can see what she's doing is strapping the, uh, the top and the bottom of the brace, getting it up in the position to match the knee joint line. Then compress or snap the uh, strap into place to hold securely the bottom and then also from the top. If this was a bilateral upright brace, you simply would have slid that up and doing the same, having a top and a bottom strap to comp create compression. Now what's different about this brace is that it has only an upright on one side and then crisscrossing straps coming across medially. The difference is when those straps are loose or the knee is bent, I should say, the straps are loose and there's no pressure on the knee. With a bilateral upright brace, there's always pressure on the knee. At this point in time, what she's going to do is say, I want to bring up the compression or support of my medial compartment. So making sure those criss strap, cross straps are on the inside edge and then dialing up the pressure until she feels those straps pull up tight. As they pull up tight or snug up, that's going to create that medial compression. As she has her knee bent, there's some looseness to it. But as she straightens the knee, you can see the compression pull and really helps support the medial condyle. Again, comfort-wise, this brace when the knee is bent is much more comfortable because there's no pressure and the pressure is only there when you fully load the knee. You can see the straps attach all the way and crisscross around the back and wrap or support to pull the pressure off of the medial side of the knee and move it towards the lateral side of the knee. The ankle sleeve can either be slip-on or, like this one, a Velcro closure. It's elastic material that wraps around and can Velcro or, again, slip into position to create compression, warmth, and some proprioceptive reminder. Again, what she's doing, taking the time to get everything comfortable, pull it all the way around, cover up all the skin, and create a good compression to help support that ankle. Again, from a sleeve standpoint, not from a brace standpoint, this won't prevent ankle sprains, just gives compression. This is a lace-up brace used to really stabilize or truly brace the ankle. In this kind, you're going to keep the laces loose and step all the way through, then snug up the laces. Notice that she will not pull the top, the bottom lace tight. Just start above the bottom lace, slightly snug, and you can get tighter or snugger as you come up. You don't want to be too tight right around the foot. That'll be too uncomfortable. Taking up all the slack in the brace, tying it off, but to create a, a complete stable position of the ankle in neutral. From there, many of them have uh, straps around them to create even more tension. She's going to wrap around the front of the brace, underneath her foot, and then pull that medial strap up to create tension. And then most importantly, the strap here with your normal kind of lateral ankle instability or ankle sprain is that strap on the outside, which she pulls up to really stabilize the lateral ankle. From there, there are straps to the, the uh, straps at the top are just simply to close, hold everything tight and in position so that it doesn't come unstrapped or come loose. This will truly lock the ankle up into a position and create true stability. Now we're gonna look at a brace that's designed for more activity. Um, it's more of a sandwich type brace in which you're gonna, very important how it articulates with the shoe. 
In this, you're gonna lift the insert up in your shoe and put the brace underneath that insert. What's very important is getting the brace in the right position. You'll notice that the brace has joints. So unlike the lace-up brace, it will articulate and move. That's gonna give you stability, but also a lot more motion. And again, not as much stability as the lace-up brace. So in here, you're not trying to actually lock the joint in place. You're trying to stabilize the joint and still allow movement. So she's gonna step into it on this type of brace. It's vital how you lace the shoe up and how you, the shoe is in, in the right position and helps hold the brace in place. Once you step through, make sure the malleolus are, are uh, centered on each side and then simply close off the front of the brace. You're gonna to try to keep the spacing in the front of the joint, how much skin you see in the front and the back to be about equal. She tends, takes up the laces and, and laces snug, doesn't have to be tight, but the shoe does not want to be loose. If it's not tight here, you won't help stabilize or hold the joint in place. Again, this joint articulates, allows the ankle to move, but creates some stability while allowing more motion. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.